space coconut. Okay, and today we're going to talk about the clown's rework. But more importantly, we're going to look at this change and ask why did the devs think it was a good idea? Before I get into it, the overlords want you to sub to the channel, hit the bell, join the discord, like the video, follow me on Twitter, put a hot sauce on your chips, follow me on Twitch, and share the video so more people can join the conversation. The links to everything are in the description. Killer Rework Many players wait for those words to come out of the devs whenever the conversation drifts to killers, and the few that need more work to do well in matches compared to the other killers. Back in the day, Hag was considered the worst killer. Freddy held that title for a while, Leatherface had it for much longer I think, Wraith needed help and received a semi-rework called a cube back in the day, and the clown was the most recent killer to hold the title of worst killer in DVD. So now it's the clown's turn to receive a rework because the devs have a hard time doing things right the first time. Everyone was super excited to find out what the devs had planned, and now we know. Unfortunately for everyone, Cloud's rework is simply an afterthought compared to the effort the dev team put into the release of the twins, and we all saw how that turned out. With as minimal effort as they could, they reworked the clown, and that rework can be boiled down to a single sentence. He makes everyone move faster, sometimes. The clown's chase potential is on the same level of other killers like Spirit and Freddy, but because he can't create map-wide pressure, the clown becomes strictly a 1v1 killer. There are ways to make this work, of course, and the quality of survivors can make matches a breeze if you're a somewhat competent killer player like myself. To solve his biggest problem, the devs decided to let him move faster, since other killers have limited movement speed bursts to help them, and they do just fine. Considering the mess they had to deal with to get the twins ready for release, the easiest solution to the clown's problem was what they decided to go with. Now don't get me wrong, if we ignore the add-on changes, the clown is practically unchanged if you decide to only use the purple gas in a match. They added something to his power and reduced his reload speed, so it's technically a buff. The loss of the exhaustion add-on makes me sad, but I can understand its removal since a killer shouldn't be able to disable survivor perks. That would be unfair. Yeah. <laughs> but if they didn't allow survivors to gain a movement speed buff from the gas, then Clown wouldn't need the purple gas and would instead be the fastest chase killer in the game, steamrolling survivors down at 125% movement speed, which is 5 meters per second compared to the survivors 4. And this is why the solution was bad in the first place, but thanks to the twins and the devs poor decision making skills, it's the solution they went with. From what I've read and watched, the majority of the responses to the intended changes for Clown and the UI are mostly negative. The question now is whether we'll see the devs backpedal on their decisions, both listening to the feedback they've received and showing that our input is really listened to. I'm confident that the UI will get updated, but will retain the old layout. The injured notifications on the survivor portraits will change, and we might see the removal of the killer hook counter, since it really doesn't serve a helpful purpose to a killer player during a match. Which of these images would make a killer player feel as though they're doing well or poorly in a match? Which would give them confidence in the state of the match, or show that they're not doing so well? Of course, that hook progress meter would become a relevant piece of information if the devs clearly defined what the wind condition for killer was and tied that meter to that wind condition. Right now it's only tied to ranks, which won't be used in any way for matchmaking soon. The new rank system will only give you a blood point bonus when it resets. Remember that when people start talking and screaming about rainbow ranks at the end of their matches. Killer players are a pretty flexible group of people. If the clown changes go live or they're adjusted afterwards, there will be players that find a way to do well with him. The real question becomes, now that we've seen how lazy the devs can be, what will the future of the game look like? The lunar event is coming up and it looks like there might be a real event this time. The spirit seems to be getting a weapon, along with cosmetics for Zarina and Adam, that don't have costs tied to them, so maybe they'll be earnable during the event. So that'll be a nice change from the winter event we had. And I've decided to wait and see what the devs do with the time they have before their anniversary and Halloween events. 
They've said that they're throttling back on everything else to focus on those events, so I'm going to take a very critical at those events to see what they did with all the time they took for those things. We'll be able to see what they were able to do by sacrificing time for good events with nearly 300 people working on the game. In the meantime, Monstrum 2 Early Access is releasing this month and I'll be dabbling in that to help introduce it to more people, as well as make the learning curve easier to deal with for new players of that game. Some of the puzzles are confusing, and it'll make the match run smoother if new players know how some of them work, as well as understanding what to do during the different stages of the match. Less confusion and frustration will lead to a better game experience, and if I can help Monstrum 2 succeed in some small degree, then I'll be happy. Anyway, let me know what you thought of this video and share it if you think it's worth it. Until next time, I'll see you in the fog.